Hell yeah, Paul Paul. And today we have with us Kurt Freeman. Hey, Kurt, how you doing? Good, Devin. What's going on, man? Oh, not a whole lot. We just wanted to uh, celebrate your release that you had going on last week. Um, how about you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so uh, so it's been kind of a long time coming. This is a project that we, uh, the band and I kind of started last December. Um, and uh, when you hear a three-song EP, it doesn't seem like it, you know, it should take seven, eight months. But obviously with <laughs> everything that happened in 2020, it was uh, no surprise that that was, you know, another another casualty of the year. But, um, but yeah, we still, you know, obviously we were able to release it last, last Friday um, on the 14th. Originally, we were supposed to release it on the 31st. But again, you know, things kind of got, got tied up with, uh, with the distribution sites and things like that. I know me and you kind of talked about that. But, um, but yeah, so eventually, you know, kind of worked through that and came out last Friday and uh, three new songs and, and uh, people seem to be liking them. And, and uh, you know, features the, the title of the EP is Outlaw, which is the first track. Um, kind of a fun, you know, upbeat, you know, drinking song that's about, you know, me and my buddies when we were kids and, you know, wanting to be wanting to be outlaws when we grow up, kind of, you know, kind of play on words and stuff like that. And then uh, the second song is actually Timing, um, you know, kind of a breakup type song. And then uh, and then the third song is called One More Song and another kind of more upbeat, you know, party song and, and about, you know, meeting a girl at the bar kind of thing. So, um, but yeah, so I'm What's pretty proud of it. What's your favorite song on there? Ooh, so... It, it changes actually i think i'm i'm uh, i'm a big fan of outlaw i think that's you know that was part of the reason that's i made the title track and that's um, my favorite you know, one on the, the track. banjo i got i got in it and, and a few of the other you know a few of the other sounds and stuff like that i was i was proud of that one and and uh, my dad is actually one of his favorite movies is outlaw josie wales um so with clean eastwood so that was kind of part of the reason that inspired the song and josie wales being you know the, the first outlaw that i name in the chorus so um, so it kind of, you know, hits home a little bit too. So I'd probably have to say that one. Yeah. Dude, I think it's sweet. Um, I, uh, we, we were, we were talking about it a couple weeks ago. I knew you were kind of down in the dumps cause I think I had just started, I just started the podcast and I think I just started advertising it like releases today. And you're like, Hey man, uh, a couple things happen. But what's, what's, what's funny is like, I, I have not, I think I've had one release in my lifetime that has released on the day that I planned for it to. <laughs> yeah, it it seems it, to go that way. It's just like um I don't know. It I could I could plan it out perfectly. I could have it and something always goes wrong. So it's just like at this point, it's just kind of like a tough uh, a a hard pill to swallow at this point, but I've just accepted it. It is what it is. Yeah, I mean, so, it, and it's one of those. It's one of those things as being an independent artist. You know, you got to kind of roll with the punches. You don't have people, you know, lining these things up for you. So it's, you know, it's, you know, not only a learning experience but a growing experience too. And you know, makes you appreciate it. Then hopefully, you know, when we get to that point when we're not doing those types of things, you appreciate it that much more. So. Oh, I I, I agree. Um, I mean, I think that's actually a really good point because, like, I know that. Um, a couple of the reasons I started this was to get to know people, make some connections, and you know, kind of showcase independent talent up and coming. But I do, I do think that I have a lot of listeners, and that's probably one of the coolest ways that I've heard it is is being able to to roll with the punches. Like I, that's not a point that I've thought about bringing up, but that's actually like a really good point. Um, cause something always goes wrong, man. Something yeah. always goes wrong, and like you said, we don't have. Like, I don't know about you. Like, I don't have a management team. I don't have a record label. So, yeah. like, all of that weighs on me. And I do think that when you get to a certain point pursuing it, like what you and I do, and when you start growing, you got to learn to roll with those punches. Like, shit's going to happen. It just is. Exactly. And I mean, that's, you know, it's part of, keep, you know, keeping yourself humble and, and, you know, knowing that you still have so much, you know, growth to do and, and so much more to go. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's nice to, you know, go through those things and, and learn now. So then, you know, you know better for next time. And, you know, I think it's just part of it. Yeah. So, so I want to, I want to talk about you for a minute. So you are from, you're from the Cleveland area, but what suburb of Cleveland are you from? Yeah. So I was, uh, well, not, I was born in North Olmsted, but when I was like two years old, moved to Independence, Ohio. So I'm pretty much from Independence, Ohio, which is about 15, 20 minutes south of downtown, um, right down 77. So grew up there, went to Independence Public Schools all through eighth grade. And then for high school, went to uh, Padua, which is over in Parma. Uh, I know private a little high bit school. about that. And uh, yeah, so met some, you know, obviously have some great friends from uh, 
from Independence and then also some great friends from Padua that, you know, from growing up. And then, um, and after Padua went to university of Dayton for college and spent a fun four years there and, uh, graduated on time, which was a, uh, <laughs> a big thing for, for me and my family. But, uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's been cool. And, and, uh, been back in Cleveland ever since graduation and working and, and, uh, and then obviously kind of started the whole music thing a couple years after college. So, and started, you know, obviously getting more serious as I go. So. What I think's crazy is the small world that we live in. Like, especially mm-hmm. like, like when when you start playing playing music, you realize um, how small that world is. But it's funny because I I went to school at, at Otterbein um, and was in a fraternity with a guy named Alex Scott, and we called him Scoots. And uh, I think it was going into my sophomore year. It was going into his his senior year, and we were around a campfire or whatever, and he says, "You got to listen to this this guy. He's 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 from my hometown. He's got some great music, and he pulled up uh, some of your YouTube videos. And uh, I think at that point in time, you, you might have had like an acoustic, like professionally cover of like Beer Pressure, maybe. I know mm. you had a a professional. Maybe I'm making that up. I I know one of the ones that I watched was Crash My Party." Yeah, so I had, uh, I think back then, yeah, so before I released any music on Spotify, it was kind of just YouTube, and yeah. um, so I think I released a couple covers, like Crash My Party, um, and stuff like that, and then I put out um, Texas, and then Beer Pressure, which were kind of like, I released them kind of as singles on YouTube, but that, you know, I obviously was just kind yeah. of putting, putting my own music out there, um, and then eventually I, you know, had those on the, on the first EP when they came out on Spotify and all that, but um, but yeah, I think at that point it was just, I had, I just had stuff on YouTube and that was it. It's just, it's just crazy because I remember listening to it and I was like, this guy, like he's, he's got a lot of talent. This is like, I enjoy listening to this. And I think that was the end of the conversation. And then like, I, I never remembered your name. Um, fast forward like six months, he brought you up again. He's like, it'd be really cool if like you guys got to meet each other and did a show. So at this point I started following you on Instagram and you and I had not had contact for probably like another year or so. Whenever I got, I got, I had just started piecing together my band and Connor, my first guitarist, we were just walking around and he's like, uh, Oh, dope. Like I didn't know Kurt played music. And I was like, who are you talking about? And then he, he showed me like, it was the release of, of your first DP that had okay, your pressure yeah. on it. And, uh, he was I, he he pulled it up and I was like I know him I was like I actually like know like that is so crazy and he's like how do you know and if you knew Connor he's like how do you know yeah oh I was gonna say yeah and I was like well like I I, I don't know him know him but like I've heard of him and I just think it's crazy and he's like well yeah he was like actually in my dorm freshman year or something like that he said something like you guys knew each other from UD and it's just crazy because like Connor's from Baltimore you're from Cleveland I'm from Columbus I'm actually from southeastern BFE Ohio. And I don't know. It's just, it's a small world, man. It's crazy. It's hilarious. Yeah. So yeah, freshman year at Dayton, uh, we ended up living not only in the same dorm, but in the same hall. So like, obviously freshman year, you know, everyone's meeting each other. You're in these tiny little closets for dorm rooms, you know, with you and your one other, other roommate. So it's like, you need to, you know, meet everybody. And, and, uh, yeah, Connor, obviously in the common room with a guitar, like within the first couple of weeks, I was like, I'll probably be friends with that guy. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just funny how like here we are years later, and it's like a, you know opening up for you guys and stuff down in Columbus last year. And that was fun. That, that was yeah. Fun. So so did you do music in college at all? Honestly, not really at all. Like I played, I would play guitar in my room or in my dorm room, like when no one else was around and the door was closed and no one else could hear it, and uh, and that was about it. Yeah, I did not, I did not really do anything in in college it's... until until really until senior year when. I was like my buddy who had never picked up a guitar before started taking these guitar classes and actually got really good. And he was finger picking and doing stuff that like I couldn't even do that. I was, you know, playing way longer than him. (laughs) So of course I was like, all right, I got to sign up for, you know, one of these classes with this guy. And, uh, and he saw me play and he was basically like, all right, Kurt, you have a ton of bad, bad habits. I will have to either start (laughs) from scratch or we could turn this into a songwriting class that I teach. And uh, so we went the songwriting route and actually like the final was to write a song and perform it um, at this little like tiny concert and stuff. So that was really my first experience doing anything like actually serious with music. 
and uh, it went really well and I had a blast with it. That's kind of when I was like, okay, this is how, you know, this is kind of writing a music and, and, you know, getting it out there. It was kind of cool. So that's kind of where that whole process kind of started. It's, it's crazy because whenever he, he pulled it up, he was like, well, shit, I, I, I didn't know he played music. <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah, he, he's damn good. Like I follow him. I just think it's crazy because Connor did music and, we ended up meeting later down the road, all making music together. So I don't know. I thought it was pretty cool. But yeah. um, real quick, before we continue on, we're going to go ahead and play Outlaw, since that's my favorite one. We're going to play that one first. going to give them a chance right. to listen to it. We'll come back oh, and yeah. talk more. So me and a couple of my friends Went back there the next weekend I find my neighbor met a sailing shotgun in So we dropped the gear and sorry, it. Boys, they like breaking the rules, and those old Wild West movies make it look pretty cool. And to be now all like Josie Wells, spinning the back on being tough as nails. Everybody else following the law, you better run if the cops get caught. Cause you're now all like Johnny Cash, they talk shit, you're gonna whoop their ass. Shot at Jack. Hell yeah, Paw Paul, and we are back. You just listened to Outlaw by Kurt Freeman, which is on his new EP, which can be found Apple Music, Spotify, Alexa, Google Play, YouTube, you name it. You, uh, If you want to find it, you'll find it. It's everywhere. But uh, Kurt, I, I, want to talk to, I want to talk to you about the making of this, this EP. So yeah. um, when did you write the songs? Um, when did you record them and how much of a time crunch did you get it in? Cause if it's anything like me, like I typically am always cramming it cause I don't plan things correctly. Yeah. So it's kind of, so I'll go chronologically, but I actually wrote one more song, um, back in 2016. Uh, cause I remember I was actually living at like my first apartment after college in Lakewood. Um, and it was like pretty close to, to downtown and everything. And it was a great spot, but it wasn't in the best area necessarily. But I, so it was just funny that like, I was definitely loud and playing like country music and like, I know my neighbors probably didn't like it, but, um, but yeah, I wrote one more song back in like 2016 and that was actually supposed to be on the original EP. Um, and that was going to be like the fifth song on it. But, um, but eventually it just got to that point where it was, you know, it was taking too much time and I, I wanted to release the four songs. You want to get it out. Um, so I kind of was like, you know what, I'm okay. You know, putting out a four song EP is like my first, you know, my first release and everything like that. So, um, so I kind of put it off and then, um, and then I had an opportunity to record a single last year with the same guys that I did the first EP with. Um, and so I sent him a couple different songs and was like, Hey, which one do you think, you know, we could kind of knock out in a day. Um, and I my one buddy who was doing like the lead guitar and a lot of the, a lot of the stuff with it. Um, he liked friends I call brothers the best and actually came up with a couple different licks for that one. And, uh, so that's kind of, we decided to do that one as a single. Um, so then when we came with this EP, I wanted, definitely wanted to have one more song on it. Um, and then it was last year actually that I wrote outlaw, um, and I wrote timing, um, last summer. So I wrote both of those. And then, um, it was last summer that we were, you know, the band and I were kind of getting going and, and playing, you know, if not every weekend, every other weekend, um, you know, playing shows in Columbus, you know, getting down there, playing with you guys, and then, um, just playing around, playing around Cleveland as well. So, um, yeah, so it was good. It was, you know, it was one of those things where I wanted to get these songs out. So the band learned them and we were playing them live. Um, and so it was at that point, we kind of like, Hey, let's, you know, let's start recording these once kind of fall winter time hit and we weren't playing as many shows. Um, so that's really when we started recording them just at my house or at my buddy's house, um, kind of just, you know, using makeshift studios and, and put, you know, using blankets and, and, you know, shelves and different things, whatever you got to do to just make it, make it sound good. So, um, I love yeah, that, we, dude. we did that basically for everything except for the drums, um my drummer actually has it has a good spot that we recorded drums at so uh, yeah it was kind of just a piece by piece you know song by song went through it recorded everything um and then it was about may we were done recording 
and then like June and July was was pretty much all um, the mixing and mastering process of getting everything kind of from recording to to finished product, so to speak. So, um, so yeah, that was kind of the timeline there. So do you ever deal with uh, writer's block or do they all just come pretty, pretty smooth with you? So I definitely have writer's block. Um, so, you know, I try to write every day if I can, or I try to, you know, when I do pick up the guitar, I try to write something, um, you know, especially with quarantine, I haven't had, you know, there isn't, wasn't much to do, especially in the beginning when we were really locked down. So um, even if I was dealing with writer's block or wasn't enjoying anything I was writing, I was still just kind of getting it out there. Um, cause I feel like, you know, the more and more I write, the more and more I get out, then it's like, eventually one of those songs that I do enjoy will come. And then it's like, all right, and then I can stop, focus on that and really build that out. And then, you know, it'll take me probably a couple of weeks to actually write a song like from start to finish, but you know, it starts by just, you know, playing guitar or, you know, writing ideas down in my phone notes and then kind of just piecing everything together. So, um, yeah, it definitely takes a while, but I feel like one, you know, once I, write something that I really enjoy, I kind of take that and expand on it and then, and then kind of go from there. But it does take a while to kind of find one of those that you like. And there are some that I've liked that I, you know, expanded on. And then after I expanded on them, I didn't like them and yeah, kind of trash them. But, um, but yeah, I think it's just, you know, you got to keep writing and, and keep getting everything that, you know, I'm feeling or whatever, just out there. And then, you know, when it's the right moment or the right song, it'll kind of hit you, but yeah. Well, um, I think that if you're going to be a songwriter, you have to, I think you got to let go of being a perfectionist. I, I have a, I have, I, I literally took a piece of paper and I wrote it in big letters and I think it says, I mean, I could go over there and look at it, but it, they're not all hit songs. And like, for me, like I'll, I'll write music, I'll write, I'll write, I'll write. And if I don't like it, I'll just, I'll, I'll throw away the paper. I'll throw away the paper. I'll delete the note or I'll just get so mad and just be done with it. And like, really someone taught me, uh, Al Cavanaugh, he's a good friend of mine. He's just like, you know, like write filler words. And even though they might sound stupid and rough cut, that's why it's a rough cut. That's why it's a rough draft. Cause like you can go back in, find words with those same, uh, syllables or, or you could find a synonym that could rhyme how you want to. And you can go back and do it. And it's funny how you said that, like, it's almost like you'd write it in pieces. Sam Sam Hunt does the same thing. His last album, uh, Southside, um, he he had a, he had an interview with with Bobby Bones. If you ever watched the Bobby Bones show, and they're like, they're like, when are you go put out your next album? When are you go put your put out your next album? And that's kind of been that was the talk from like 2014 to like, you know, 2018, 2019, and basically Sam Hunt. Uh, he had like half written songs on his phone, half written songs on his laptop. He had some notebooks and he, he was talking about like how a verse would be written on his iPhone. Then he's got a Mac back home that the, the bridge is on. And then the chorus is chilling in a notebook that he's got stored away in his car. Like, I just think it's, I think it's funny, but I also think that it shows persistence and not giving up on your ideas. Like just let them happen. Like, Odds are your song's not going to be written in a day, and it's not going to be 100% in a day. So, like, if you got to tuck it, store it away, move on. Tuck it, store it away. I think the people that do him. love it, yeah, no, for sure. And that's and that's one of the things. It's like you know, I with with how I write my music, I've always written it by myself, and. Um, and I think with the process through that, it's just like, I always relate to personal experience and I always relate to like my own stories and things like that. So when I'm doing that, it's, you know, sometimes I'm in a good mood and it's hard to pull from those bad experiences or things like that. You know what I mean? So you gotta be, it's gotta be the right time in the right place. You gotta feel the music. You, uh, you, yeah, you have to feel the music. And, um, I don't know if you ever watched, have you ever seen the show Nashville? I actually have not. Everyone oh. gives me shit for that too. I've like literally my roommates watched it like two or three times through, and he's like, "Dude, how have you not? How have you not watched this shit?" I'm yet? on. I'm on the second time. I'm on the second time through, and it's so funny because like it's like my daily fixing of days of our lives or General Hospital, like our grandmas have. You know what I'm saying? They, mm-hmm. oh, they yeah. get all their oh, yeah. they 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 uh they look forward to getting their panties in the water over who knows who every every day at 4 p.m. But in that show, um. They make the, I think they de- they depict Nashville the right Nashville uh, songwriting and performing very well as to what it is in real life. 
But what's cool is like those studios, if you're not feeling it, they'll just be like, go home. Like not in a rude way. It's just like, you got to feel it. Like you're just, you're just beating your head in for no reason. Like if you're not feeling it, you're not going to get the best product. Like it's the same thing with, with recording, playing and, and, and songwriting. Yeah. I mean, it has to be authentic. And I think, you know, fans or, you know, people that listen to music and really enjoy music can always tell, you know, whether something's authentic or not. Like I always love Chris Stapleton. Like I think Chris Stapleton has one of the most authentic sounds. Like he's never going to change his sound for anything, but it's good because it's so perfect. You know what I mean? Like he's so good at what he does and it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's him. You know what I mean? It's, it's when you hear his voice, you know, it's Chris Stapleton. So this is kind of an off topic. Um, question but i want to know your thoughts on authentic authenticity and mainstream country music like wh- how do you think that's looking like i i personally in the back of my mind have a couple of artists that i think what they write is real what they write is not the same bull crap that every artist is writing about um and then i have then there are some where i'm like it's just like like where's the meaning anymore I, I think that it's hard because like I'm always trying to write something that's not there yet. Like you don't want to be the next Luke Combs. You don't want to be the next um, Morgan Wallen, the next Chris Stapleton. Like you want to be like for me, I want to be Devin Henry and I want to be a Devin Henry that no one else has ever seen. And, and, and something that no one else has heard is, as I'm sure you, you do with your music, which I think you do a really good job of uh, having your own sound and not mimicking um I don't know. I, I just feel like some people can tend to mimic and sing their like just like their influences. And I think that as an artist, you got to develop your own sound while using those roots. Um, if that makes any sense. But uh, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say yeah. I think and that's you know I think part of you know when I write my music and it's like those guys definitely inspire me, but it's like, I kind of use a combination of, of all the different styles and all those different artists that I do like versus, you know, just pulling from one source. So it's like right. my own interpretation of all those different influences kind of rolled into one. I'm so, the, I'm the same way. And I think, I think that's, that's what every, every, per, everyone has influences. I mean, if you mm-hmm. saw, if I wrote down every one of my 500 influences, dude, oh my God, like, yeah, let's go forever. There's so but many good artists out there. It's important. I mean, your own sound is your own story at the same time as well. So it's 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 pulling all that together. That together. Um, do you have any uh, advice for anyone listening as to like? I know you mentioned going back and drawing inspiration from like some of your um, favorite artists, but like, do you have any advice for those that that uh, encounter a writer's block? Yeah. So honestly, if you're getting, you know, if you're having a writer's block, I honestly, like the first thing I do is I, you know, kind of like I said, I'll, I'll grab my old iPod or I'll grab my, you know, my phone and go to a playlist of songs that I love or just, you know, my old, you know, go-to playlist kind of thing. And I'll just like, listen, you know, take a walk or just kind of clear my head. And, uh, and typically I'll just kind of go through, you know, go through songs and just listen until something kind of hits me. And, um, you know, typically whatever that may be, I'll go back and, and just try to write something. And, um, I mean, it's, it's, you're not, you know, like you said earlier, it's not every song is going to be a hit. And, you know, I've talked to a few people that are, you know, full-time songwriters in Nashville and, you know, their full-time job is to songwrite. So they'll write, you know, five, six songs a day. And that's insane. You know, when I hear that, when I hear that pace and that's like the standard, like you have to at least write five, six songs a day. And like, those are, you know, maybe two or three of those a day turn into demos. And then, you know, maybe one of those are actually worth sending out a week or whatever it may be. Cause it's kind of, you know, it's a numbers game, you know, it's, you got to keep writing. So if you're hitting writer's block, you know, maybe the best thing is, you know, to do is to step away. But um, I kind of, you know, step away, listen to some other music, just try to get inspired by something um, and then go back to it. But, yeah, that's, I mean, that's usually what I do, but everyone's kind of I different, think, you know? I think stepping away is important, um, but, like, like that's what I'll do. I'll just be like, you know what? Like, it's just not happening today. But at the same time, I really like what you're saying is step away, but step away with purpose to find other inspiration. I mean, that's what it sounded to me like. Like, you're, you're going to step away, and you're not just going to, you're not going to be at the pen and paper writing music, but you're going to be listening to other stuff 
I mean, I know people that'll, that'll go on hikes, they'll check out the wilderness or they need to be alone or they need to be in their space. So I think that it's okay to step away, but just step away with purpose. But, um, like it, and it doesn't even have to be listening to music. Like that's what I do and what I escape to, but like, it could be looking at old pictures, you know, looking through a photo album or looking through, you know, putting a movie on or something that's like, like getting in some sort, sort of, of, yeah, you're getting, you're getting in a feeling you're, you're wanting to feel like I, I, I really like, I've never tried that looking at old pictures. Cause I'll tell you what, that'll put me in my feels real fast, dude. But like not even necessarily bad feels. I mean, like. It could, I mean, like, if I got a an awesome video of an awesome time I had, like, that's, you know, that's going to put me in that kind, kind of mood. Exactly. Like, then it's, Dude, that's you genius. go back to that day that that happened or whatever. I mean, think of Refrigerator Door by Luke Combs. I mean, that's, he literally was probably sitting at his kitchen table at his, you know, parents' house, looked over at the fridge, <laughs> saw all these pictures and stuff. Was like, oh my God, that's a song. Like, oh my, it's like all these, all these feelings come back and it's like, that's when it hits you. You like, got to write something Bro. down. His pen and paper makes millions and it blows my mind. But real quick, I'm going to have to cut this off real quick. Um, we're going to play um, another one of it. What, what, what song you going to play next? Your call. Your call. Timing or one more song doesn't matter. We're going to play timing. That's what I was going to say. Okay. All right. I like that. <laughs> so we're going to play timing and uh, we'll be back for some more. Cause it was the way she looked at me all night And the way she turned my hand It was the way that she just smiled at me And laughed at what I said And I know she's getting over her past And I understand that the timing's never right When you meet the girl you're trying to find Okay, so, hell yeah, Paul Paul, and we were back. We just listened to Timing by Kurt Freeman. You can catch that um, on Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play, Alexa, on his new EP, Outlaw, we just talked about earlier. So, so Kurt, we were talking earlier about you, um, you're starting a, a new, or you're, you got a, a show to stop, uh, soccer, I cannot talk. You you have a show at a uh, soccer stadium, right? Just or so, soccer something field. Of the sort? Yeah, soccer so- field. Yeah, soccer just field. Like at Let's... the at the uh, the park there in Independence. But yeah, no. So we're like Independence has been doing like a Thursday night live like concert series through the summer, um, and it's just been at like their main like little gazebo in the center of town, um, where they you know bring food trucks up and then have live music and people come. It's like a free free music kind of thing, and people just bring lawn chairs and. Everyone has to wear masks, it's all social distance, which is cool. So, um, but because, you know, I being, you know, growing up there, they put the billboards out. And I guess uh, the one girl that I set this up with, um, she works for the city. She actually reached out and said, hey, we're expecting a big crowd Thursday night. So we got to move you from the gazebo to uh, to the soccer field. So that's dope, um, though. Yeah. So it'll be pretty cool. It's a good setup. And, you know, it's kind of funny. Like I'm playing at the, uh, you know, kind of in the area where I grew up playing T ball and, coach pitch and you know all that stuff growing up in independence so it'll be kind of kind of funny playing back back there for uh you know with with the full band and everything so yeah i'm excited it comes, it'll be the first show in a while full, dude it comes full circle it's crazy how it works like that when uh when is when is this show so it's uh tomorrow night thursday uh what the 20th um so by the time this airs it, it'll already happen but yeah but, uh, I'm sure but I'm, hopefully I'll have some videos and pictures and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it'll be the first time we've played in a couple, couple, you know, I think about a month or a little bit of month over a month. Um, when we played that show at Collision Bend downtown in, uh, in Cleveland, where it was like, you know, we were out on the patio and, you know, everyone on the patio had to be social distance. And so there were less seating and, you know, it's just kind of all spread out and stuff, which aren't usually how I like to have my shows go. So. Um, so it was a little tough, but it was still fun and, and, you know, good to play. So I'm excited for tomorrow night. It'll be a little different, but it should be a good crowd and, you know, always, you know, f- playing with the full band and everything like that. That's always fun. So I'm excited. It's, it's definitely different. We did a, a show at Bristol downtown, um, uh, in, in the short North in Columbus and, uh, 
they had a an 80 person cap limit and uh dude that night was crazy so obviously it's it's not the same atmosphere so like i've played at bristol before i've i've been there where there's been 300 people there just all up by the stage but like this time everyone had to sit in their seats but what was so crazy about it is like the night that i like the the second i strummed my first chord the riots happened downtown oh so yeah like, we had to like, that. yeah we had to stop and uh i remember like just because like i had a bunch of fans coming and uh i didn't want them in harm's way by any means so i step outside the door and look up and there's helicopters everywhere there's all these like uh, protesters and and there were some rocks thrown at uh, that that strip of like the the place next door had had to replace her window, other side had to replace a window. But like Bristol was untouched, which I think is just very interesting if you ask me. But it so let's say that all all conditions being how they were prior to COVID, do you ever get nervous? And if you do, what kind of a setting makes you nervous? So. I'll be honest. It's just the waiting period. Like the day of the show, just leading up to that, I'm just nervous because it's more like anxiety and excitement and just all those emotions kind of all the work leading up to that point. And then it's like day of, it's like, all right, what, what else could I have done? Or, you know, similar to like, I don't know, when playing sports growing up, it's like, you know, game day is always like you got the butterflies all day, you know, through class. And it's like, all you could think about is, you know, the game and everything like that. So that's kind of how it is. Um, and then once it like starts, like as soon as we do like sound check and I have a guitar in hands, it's fine. Like, I don't really think about it at that point. Then it's just playing music, but it's the whole leading up to the event is, uh, is a little nerve wracking for me. So do you have any like pre-show rituals? Um, not yet. I mean, really, you know, the boys and I always kind of like huddle up and like, we'll do a quick prayer and then like, just kind of a, you know, a quick, like pump up speech a little bit um and kind of a cheers that's just usually my style but you know it's pretty low-key it's nothing and you know we we haven't had that many shows where it's like you know become a regular thing where we're backstage but you know the best the best experience that we had was when we did that you know and then we went on stage you know to perform at the Cuyahoga county fair last year um and opened up for laney wells international mcbride which was cool so um so yeah so like before that it was like a lot everyone kind of had the jitters and um and everyone was kind of nervous it was kind of cool just like hey let's huddle up like take a deep breath we're gonna go kill it and and we did so my uh my ritual is i said on the first podcast it's always a double vodka red bull and it's like just just enough to like take the edge off but like also just enough to kind of have you wired a little bit um it's it's crazy because like if i'm being honest I don't really get nervous for big shows. Like if I'm playing in front of 300, 400 people, thousand people, like that's, that doesn't bother me. What bothers me is campfire music and like playing at like little house parties in front of like four people. Hold on, yeah. But the, 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 the reason being is, you know, if you got a show with a crowd of people, you don't have to make eye contact with every person. If you do, you're more so just kind of grazing. But like, if you're if you're at a if you're in a setting with like three four people that want to hear you play some acoustic music, I can see every facial reaction, and it I don't know I just get wigged out by that. But uh, I didn't know if you had like a, a pre show drink or a pre show just like. Yeah. No. I mean, it's it's kind of just like I don't know. I I don't like to, I was. I don't know. I don't like to eat before I, before I play, like that's a ritual. I don't know. I usually have like, my goal is to have like three beers and then have my fourth as I'm going on stage. Like that's kind of the perfect spot yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah. um, you get it down to, you get it down yeah. to a science, if I, if, I, if, if I start drinking whiskey, then it's just, it, by the end of the show, I'll be, I'll miss every other line. Like I'll forget every, all the lyrics like that just happens. <laughs> Like, I'll, or I'll just have my phone out and, and we're just doing covers at that point. But, uh, and I'm looking up the words, but no, I, I try to stick to just beer. Um, obviously because, to, you know, eventually people, you know, at the bar type shows, you know, my buddies always bring me shots and stuff when they think they're being funny, like give me a tequila shot while I'm on stage oh. and like trying to sing. And, you know, you can't make the face when everyone's, when everyone's looking at you. So, 
they think yeah they, they think it's funny but it's whatever but uh yeah I mean I, other than that it's just kind of I go up and play and as far as like I definitely get more nervous for the bigger shows I think I mean kind of opposite of you like I just kind of grew up playing those campfire stuff so it's just like that comes natural but being on stage and having the inner monitors and you know listen to myself back and you know trying to find the right levels for everything where I want stuff but so that that whole thing is is kind of still new to me so I get a little bit more nervous when it's full band and a lot more is going into it but uh, but it always turns out well it's always a good time so as an artist and a band leader if you were to critique yourself where where are your weak spots or like what's one big flaw that you wish that you could like you could fix or if there's something that you like not even necessarily musically but if there's something if like in this music business if there's something you you could critique about yourself as as to how you would run or sh- you would want to run your show a little better what would it be for sure so i mean i think musically the easy one just to kind of throw out there musically would be i wish i was better at guitar I think part of the reason like I, the band started was really because I couldn't play all the stuff I wanted to play on, you know, by myself acoustically. So I kind of, you know, that's when my two guitarists start, you know, joined me and it was just me singing and then playing a lot of the stuff on guitar. And then I would join in when needed. Um, Cause I, you know, I know I like writing myself and, you know, writing on my guitar, but there's a lot of stuff that I hear and that I want to play, but physically I just can't do you it. Can't like, do it. Not, I've hit that like wall with, with guitar for some reason where I'm just like, I've been playing for, geez, almost 12 years now. And I feel like I, you know, I'm, I'm decent, but I'm not where I want to be. So I would love to be better at guitar, but, um, I think that if I had a flaw, my biggest flaw was like, I don't know, probably, probably punctuality. I'm, I'm very organized, but like I, I've had too many situations where I'm just running around like a chicken with his head cut off trying to make sure. Cause I mean, like, I mean, you know how stressful shows are trying to set up and making sure that every piece is going to function. But, um, I, I would also say like, not necessarily like music equipment production, but like, I think that I would be very self-sufficient if I knew how to record and produce my own music from my home. Like I know a lot of people can do that. Like, like even, like decent enough to put out on on SoundCloud or or you know Spotify, Apple Music. So like I think that that is something that I really want to work on as well as I think you hit the nail on the head, dude, like being a musician and an artist, like learning how to play how to play guitar when you're a singer, like that's it's difficult. But but you realize especially like when you go to Nashville, like not only do these people with their amazing voices and awesome original sound um, blow your mind away, but then you see that they can play guitar too, and they can have absolutely shred it and improvise in shows. Like I would love to do that as well. But, but yeah, dude, I I, I hear that completely. Um, so this is this is kind of like a funny segment. Uh, me and Luke, Her- me and me and Luke Hurst, we were talking about this a um, couple days ago. Um, have you ever? <laughs> We actually made a term for it. They're called female front rowers. <laughs> Have you ever had any interesting uh, interactions with just those? Because they're they are their own breed, man. They come to those shows and they they put on some sort of a show, whether it's a good one or a bad one. But they always know how to make it a damn good time. I just didn't know if you had any funny stories in those instances. So probably the the first thing that comes to mind i mean first of all like the nice thing is and and one of the reasons i love playing country music is all my that's what me and all my buddies listen to so my like close group of buddies are literally at every show that i play they're always front row and 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 they're always you know it's an excuse for them to like get a little rowdy have a couple drinks and go out on you know weeknight weekend night whatever it is and uh the one time so if you if you've ever heard beer pressure in the second verse i talk about how my buddy tony got promoted yeah and is is the line and uh and literally that's about one of my best friends is he's a twin and tony he got promoted at his job and literally it turned into like a wednesday night of all of us going out getting like blacked out at this local bar <laughs> like ubering home having to go get the cars in the morning like all this stuff like and then you know all of us working the next day too on top of it so that was like the inspiration for the song so then you know cut to last year that we we're playing at a show at, at uh, plank road tavern in lakewood which is like a bar that we played at quite a bit 
and my buddy Tony and we had the whole crew is there. And my buddy Tony literally knew this part was coming up. He gets and just stands on top of the high, like a high table, not even like the normal like oh tables my. people eat at, like a high table where people set their drinks at. Stands on that, like his head is at the ceiling, and he just like was like waiting for all the praise when that part happened, and everyone that knew just points at him, and it was just like it was a wild scene. It was just so, and I'm just like trying to keep it straight, like remembering the words when all this is happening, like. Yeah, it was hilarious. That would probably be the, the the best story that I got as far as that goes. What about that you? Is... I'm, I'm sure you uh, – I was going to say I've seen a few of your shows that I know that happens. Man, I – it's always – for me, it's always a person that, like, I've never seen before or it's, like, that um, – like, like a regular to that bar. Um, my My – it takes a lot to get my face red, but like this one particular time, um, I had this girl that had a carried her pool stick to the, the stage. It was a venue, but there was like, and she just walked up and just like, like put her hand like on my inner thigh and like trying to sing she's country while, you know, like, like I'm not going to act like she's not sexually assaulting me right now, but no, that was, that was interesting. I've had, I've had, I've had some bold statements that actually like aren't even remotely, um, appropriate to even put on this. That's just been like, I can't, I can't believe that not only that came out of your mouth, but you said that publicly, like loudly too. So have you, have you had any, um, embarrassing moments on stage? Yeah, well, uh, like, what is your most embarrassing moment that you think that just just happened? You're like, I, oh man, that's awful. So there were there were a few times. So actually, the first time, like, it was right after I released my first CP, and we were actually playing at the Cuyahoga County Fair, which is how we got the show last year. So this is a couple of years ago, and it was like my first time playing at like the county fair, like my first night. So of course, like. I didn't bring extra strings, but what happens within the, on the third song of my two hour set? Oh, I just yeah, shred no. like three strings. Cause I was just getting too into it. I, I can't even remember what song, but I was just getting too into it. It's humid as hell. Snapped three strings. Didn't have a guitar the rest of the night. So literally we were just going with my buddy on lead guitar and my buddy on a half drum set. So it was just vocals, lead guitar and drums for the rest of the night. <laughs> we made it work, but uh, it was not my best show. That was probably Dude, that's worst. awful. That gives me that gives me sweat beads thinking about it. Like that's oh, awful. So- so I will never go to a show without like extra batteries, extra strings. Like I learned my lesson that time. It's again, you just got to roll with the punches. It's like, you know, you just got to learn from those things. And uh, so that was definitely the worst, but then there were t- a few times last year where I literally like actually, all right, no, this is another story. So this is back when I was playing open mics. So this is before I had a band. I was even like, I, like I hadn't even played Texas in front of anyone yet at this point, like just my first couple open mics. And uh, I tried to cover an Ed Sheeran song and I got way too drunk because it was like no one was there. So I was like, all right, I'm going to try a new song tonight. There's like the only people here are the other people signed up to play at this open mic. So it's like one of those where it's like the only people there are the artists. It's not even a thing. So I was drinking a little bit again, like started drinking whiskey and got too drunk. Go up there, try to cover a song that I was not ready to cover and just got lost in the middle of the song and just ended it. And just stopped and just moved on and just was like, all right, deuces, I'm I'm going home. This was bad. So those are probably the worst two. Those are definitely the worst two. And that's when I also learned my lesson about drinking too much before going on stage and playing a song that you are not ready to play on stage. <laughs> and then combine those two. Dude, I think it, what do they say? The the best lessons are paid for, like it, because that's when it locks in. I mean, and I, you've hit the nail on the head drinking. There is a very, it's a fine line. Like, especially like if you're getting ready to perform, like you need, you, you don't need it, but you want just enough, to take the edge off, kind of loosen up a little bit. But if you take that too far, it can turn out to be a shit show. And, and it's singing that, that tricks me up. Like if I was just playing an instrument, like if I was just playing guitar and that's all I had to do. Wouldn't be that big of an issue. It's the fact that I got to do that and then remember words, yes. and then say those words in the right order, and then make them sound good. It's like I'm that's telling when the you, drinking mixes you up. 
Yeah, and I, I'm t- I I think that learning lyrics is is hard as is. Period. Like I like people don't understand it, but like like when you have a 300 song set list in your brain, knowing every lyric and having to, it's pain. Mm-hmm. But, oh, dude, it's it's tough, and I like I have a bad memory as it as it is. So it's like <laughs> on my on my set list, I literally like songs that I know I will forget the words to. I'll write like the first two words of the yes. verses just so I like yes. all right, I know where I'm at. And like, dude, it's you got to do I, that. Like little tricks I, of the trade, you know, just to keep you keep you keep you honest. But all you all you need is the first word, and I I, I feel that. But my my most embarrassing story at a show at Fenders, which is like a it's a music venue tour. It's in Columbus, but it's like towards Polaris. And uh, I regularly will play at this place called um, Keystone Pub, and that that's that's the place that you opened up for me. So it had taken me forever to land this spot at Fenders. I don't know why, but it did. And uh, when I finally like got in there and we're booked and stuff, like I was, I I kind of did the whole double vodka Red Bull, but I had like two, then like three, then it was a beer, and then next thing I know, it's time for me to play. Two biggest mistakes is is don't don't say the f word on stage. It doesn't matter what time of night. It's just not a good look. And secondly, do not call your music venue the wrong name. <laughs> no. So it was like, you know, I would venture to say that like towards the back half of your night is when everyone's kind of had some alcohol and it's kind of a rowdy crowd. Well, my rowdy point hit after set one, which is like the first like 45 minutes into it. So I get back from set one and I'm like, Keystone, stand the up. And then like... Hell, hell yeah, Keystone, dude! It was awful. Like I wanted to crawl in a hole, cause like, oh man, any any way you slice it, it's just bad. But, yeah. But, but Kurt, I I know you got to get off of here. Um, I I dude, I I appreciate all your time. I know we tried to um, we tried to do this last week, but uh i mean life of an artist we're all busy so i'm yeah. glad that we we could uh get together and finally record it uh, i've been wanting when i started this you were one of the first artists that i knew for a fact that i was going to have one here so i think it's been really cool uh to 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 link up together and to talk about some stuff that uh, maybe people don't know that happens behind the scenes to talk about uh, i don't know just to get to know who you are get to know who i am and uh and and just talk music, dude. I think it's, I think it's been a blast. Dude, hundred percent. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me again. And yeah, I appreciate being flexible and everything so we can get this, get this on the calendar and make it happen. And, and again, yeah, I know we kind of know each other and, and go back and stuff. So it's kind of <laughs> cool to talk on an official platform for once and, and talk about some serious stuff for once. So yeah, dude, thank you so much for having for me. Sure, again. For sure, man. Dude, thank you, and uh, yeah, guys, go go check out his EP. You can get it anywhere. Uh, there's no sense, there, there should be no reason you guys don't just listen to it. I mean, we got to support the independent artists here, but especially the, part, the independent artists that uh, make some damn good music. So uh, you all have a great Friday, and uh, we'll catch you next week. Hell yeah, Paw Paw. Yeah, I went back to the
lights came on She whispered in my ear Boy, can you take me home? 